Alright guys, welcome to the video. Um, as you can see, Marlon's back. Um, for any of the people who have been around for a little while, you guys know that Marlon has been in a few of my videos and he's a powerlifter just like me. And we're both repping out RUPL right now because you guys know I love representing. And uh, he's going to be part of the team at some point, just wait. At some point. <laughs> but um, today, the, it's going to be a little bit of a different video. We trained earlier, so we're going to be having scenes from that up. I hit a 480 pound deadlift PR, which I'm very proud of. He hit some rep work today, and in all, it was pretty good volume. But today, me and him both wanted to bring up a, disc uh, like a topic to discuss, and it's going to be a little different because we're basically going to be discussing the topic and just like putting out ideas. And if you guys, the, the important thing here is I want you guys to just take in our ideas and like let me know what you think. We're going to probably say some things that people might not agree with, but that's all cool because the, the fun part about it is hearing what you guys think, and I think that's what I want to do most. So um, today's topic is going to be what we feel like the future of uh, powerlifting is going to be in terms of being able to appeal to a larger uh, amount of people and how we feel like powerlifting today and powerlifting of tomorrow are going to basically be two different entities and how we feel it's going to change. So do you want to start it off Marlon or do you want me to like bring up something? Yeah, um, in terms of the future of powerlifting, I just think for raw lifting at least, there's a stereotype. Well, a lot of people don't know what the difference of raw lifting and equipment lifting is. Lifting is for people so, looking at it. For people, it's just powerlifting. And there's a not a negative notion on it, but it's just like people think about powerlifting as I don't kind know of like a grungy sport. You know what I mean? Yeah, very grungy. Like, I, I feel you because like I, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but like when you look up equipped lifting, you're gonna see some you know some yeah. clips of some 300 pound guys in some squat suits squatting like over a thousand pounds with this much range of motion. And don't get me wrong guys, like I don't think like you have no bad blood with equipped lifting. I have, <laughs> personally, I have no bad blood with equipped lifting. I think it, it's obviously the thing that started the sport, but for me personally, and I think you agree with this, I don't feel like equipped lifting is the future. I feel like for powerlifting to become popular and for people to see it as something respectable, yeah. the same way you would say about Olympic lifting, um, I think that raw lifting really is going to pave the way. Yeah. And like, do you do you want to expand on that? Um, yeah, it's just like I said, the common stereotype of being a grunty sport. I remember at the beginning of the semester, uh, I introduced myself to somebody. And I was like, yeah, uh, my hobby is powerlifting. And they were like, whoa, don't punch me, man. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm, it's just powerlifting. It's just like, powerlifting. Oh, and they told me, they were like, oh, yeah, I heard about it. It's like those big fat guys who just eat so much and then they go lift like heavy weight. I'm like, oh, no, that's not really what I do, but. <laughs> and it's like yeah. sort of a connotation that I, like, like you said, I don't associate with that. Yeah. And like, in my personal opinion, when you look at Olympic weightlifting, when you're watching like the Olympics on TV, I remember when I was like a 12 year old, you know, I had no idea what lifting was, but it's, you know, for like a couple minutes, they might flash on from the Olympics, you know, someone, yeah. someone doing a clean and jerk, right? And like, there's this sense of awe as you see this very athletic body. I just always, I admired uh, Olympic weightlifting because it's, it's an art form, the way that they use technique, mm -hmm. the way their bodies exactly. are shaped, because they're really athletic and, and they I appreciate it, that a lot. Yeah. They both like practice it and the fact that they look like athletes yeah. is what I think like when people watch it, they're like, oh my God, like they're wearing minimal like assistance yeah. gear, like maybe a belt, like a really thin Olympic lifting yeah. belt, like some knee sleeves and they're lifting incredible weight. And they're like, you know, they're doing this on their own and they look like athletes while they're doing yeah. it. And in my opinion, like, powerlifting has just as much potential in terms of garnering, like, a, a population of people saying, wow, they look like athletes. And if you look at raw powerlifters today, like, the guy, the generation that's leading powerlifting right now, you'll see so many guys in the raw division who look like fucking beasts. Dude, look like athletes. With this kid that I was talking about, that he had this picture in his head that we're all fat and you know we lift heavy weights I showed him the the modern raw powerlifters and he's like wow dude they're jacked why are they so yeah. lean compared to the guys I thought were like, lifting it's you look at uh, some of the people on my own powerlifting team like guys yeah. who are putting up 600 plus pounds on deadlifts squatting over 500 benching crazy yeah. weight these are guys who look like fucking athletes exactly. they look well built well proportioned and their bodies are made in a way that's designed to lift the weight they're going for. Exactly. And like, for instance, like when you look at, for instance, an equipped lifter, n like I said, no shade against equipped lifting, but to be a good equipped lifter, you gotta fill out your suit. You gotta fill out that squat suit, and you gotta have a lot of extra pounds on you. And to 
be able to like do that, it really takes away from the aesthetic. And I'm not saying that aesthetics is everything, yeah. but I do think that the guys who are paving the future for powerlifting to be noticed are the guys who are bringing together that you know that power and also that aesthetic value. Yeah. Like you look at guys like like Dmitry Klokov and yeah. like you know Olympic weightlifters like that. People who have no idea what Olympic weightlifting are, they look at him and they're like, oh my god, like. He is throwing crazy amounts of weight over his head, and he looks like a god while he's doing yeah. it. And but then you look at guys who are in like raw lifting. Like, do you, do you have anyone you can keep in mind? Jesse Norris is the first. Oh yeah, guy Jesse goes. Norris, uh, John Hack, John Lane Hack. Warren. Dude, like, there's so many. There's so uh, many guys like them who are just like they're putting up incredible so numbers. Many, yeah, I can't like name. I, I can't even remember some of their specific lifts, but like for instance, Lane Norton squatted I think 678 or something, something like that. Man, man. Something and he did that raw. <laughs> he did that raw. Yeah. And in my opinion. If that was the stuff that people saw through powerlifting, if they saw this very well like built man who like whose training is so like like perfected and so yeah. like like not just like Lane Norton but like in general like guys and girls whose training is so pinpointed, their bodies are like basically the product of all this like work and effort. Yeah. They're seeing people who are putting that on the line, and that is what in my opinion is gonna earn the respect yeah. of more than just lift like the lifting community because right now most people who are interested in powerlifting are people like you and me you and me who are like already invested in the community yeah and i love that about it i love the fact that you are so you know well knit but at the same time i want i want people outside of the community to be able to respect powerlifting so they can powerlifting exactly. can get to that level so we have a positive connotation on this yeah and like i said no bad blood against equipped lifting but when when you see a sport that looks more athletic, it's it's more pleasing to watch, and it's it has a be, it has a more positive image in everybody's yeah. mind, other than a grunt sport where everybody's like testosterone everywhere, and you know what I mean. Yeah, and like it's almost like it turns off a lot of people. Yeah. And like in my, in my personal opinion, when I was like uninvolved in the powerlifting community as someone who just wanted to get in shape when I first started lifting and everything, I looked at it and I only saw, for the most part, the face of powerlifting and that was a quick lifting and I yeah. remember being so turned off thinking, yes. no, nah, that's not for me. Same thing, I used to have the most negative image of powerlifters until... Until you try it yourself. Yeah, and until you these realize. pioneers that we have, like Wayne Moore and Eric Helms, all these guys, they're, they powerlifted at some point and they gave, it, they gave the sport a good image, you know, they yeah. look athletic, they're aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, and like the, to be honest with you, like being an athlete, like it means so much to me. And like, what what I really want is I want the community of athletics in general to recognize powerlifting, yes. so that we can get to the same level as other sports. Because like powerlifting has definitely made its place. But what I would love to see is to see the same amount of respect that Olympic weight yeah. Olympic weightlifters get for powerlifters. Because in my opinion, even though Olympic weightlifting is very technique based, and don't yeah. get me wrong, it's amazing that they can. Do that powerlifting it's a different ideology and so because we're we're all focused on putting up the most amount of weight possible that is a different set of mastery and it in my opinion deserves its own sense of respect yeah and us just like any other athlete we have to put in a lot of work a lot of time a lot of patience it's not easy to be strong yeah. you have to practice the movements you have to get the movements get good form it's have not it's not just you have good program. It takes a lot of key. yeah. A lot of people so don't realize work. that. Oh, you don't just go in the gym and lift weights. You have to program your lifts. You have to, you have to plan ahead, or else you're just your so many isn't worth so much. many. Like if you're at step A, all the way to step like Z has yes. already been calculated. There's so much planning that goes into it. And for an athlete that's doing in that much work, I would love yeah. to see those kinds of athletes, athletes getting real recognition, getting you yeah. know like the same sense of like sponsorship. Getting, not necessarily it's not about the money, but I yeah. would like to see the world viewing powerlifting and saying, wow, like that athlete yeah, deserves like a big sport, a sport that will gain a bigger audience. I mean, it already has. It's definitely, masters. and if you look at what raw powerlifting has done yeah. for this sport, I think in this state alone in New Jersey, there used to be one meet per year and it yeah. had somewhere around 150-ish members three years ago. And now that raw powerlifting has been established, every yeah. single year, it's been increasing like almost exponentially. Man, they were so long. They were so long, they yeah. couldn't even handle it. Yeah. It's increasing exponentially because of raw powerlifting and the introduction of it in the last few years. Yeah. So that's what I really want to talk about today with my friend Marlon. Yeah. Um, I've more or less said what I wanted to say. Is there anything you would like to put in? Uh, not really. Maybe to touch on what you said in your last video about your uh, culture or your people. Yeah, yeah. I think the negative... Uh, 
what was it, the negative uh, oh, yeah, image like, that you guys aren't strong or you, athletic or something like that? If you guys look at my last video, I also would like to just clear up something. I made a video about trying to power lift and the idea of athletics and why powerlifting is so important to me because part of me wants to break that racial stereotype that somehow Indians can't be athletic. And I wasn't trying to say that you specifically, you who's yeah. watching this video, has this stereotype. What I was trying to say is, let's look, think of it from an opposite point of view. When you think of elite athlete and strength, or like in general, you think of a runner, he's Kenyan, right? Yeah. Like you think of an amazingly strong Olympic weightlifter, oh he must be Russian. But when you think of an athlete, there's very few times when you ever think of someone Indian. And like, it's no discredit to people out there because to be honest with you, it's true, there just aren't that many Indians in elite athletics. And what I was trying to say, what I think was kind of lost, was that I would like to set by example, maybe through my own way, which my way is through powerlifting, that Indian people have just as much, you know, business getting involved in elite athletics. And I want to like sort of prove a point that for people back home, back in India, you know, if you want to get involved in elite athletics, do it because I know personally from being there, people have a lack of drive because they feel that they can't accomplish yeah. it since no one else from their country is. It's a, it's the same thing over here. Like I'm Guatemalan, you would think I play soccer or something. That's just a that's a common stereotype. But I'm Guatemalan. I have a couple of other Guatemalan friends who are powerlifting too, and it's just just what Deb just said. We can get involved the same way everybody else can. It's just the fact that people don't think, since we don't have so much representation in the sport, that what's the point of them doing it? But anybody can go out and do it. It's the matter of you put the work in, and then yeah, exactly. you know, there's a good image to everybody else. And the point is, like, if you are interested in becoming an athlete, do what it takes, put in the work, put in the hours, do it smart, and you can achieve what you what you basically dream of achieving. Yeah. So, guys, I mean, I at that point, I think that, that was good. Yeah, I, I'm glad so we, we expanded to, on yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I'm really happy with how this discussion went. Let me know what you guys think because I really, I actually and personally in this the last few minutes have really enjoyed this discussion. Yeah. I think it was pretty awesome. We put out a lot of good ideas. I want to hear what you guys have to say, you know, both positive and negative. Just yeah. let it out because I would love to read it let anyway. It if we said something you didn't like. We and just want to know your feedback. I just yeah. really wanted that feedback, exactly. And exactly. without further ado, guys, thank you so much for watching. Marlon and me are going to peace out right now. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye. Peace out.